In story by Breitbart, the uh, uh, headline reads, Turkey, Iran agree to boost military ties, is what it says. It says, Turkey and Iran have agreed to boost military cooperation after talks in Andikara, and, I'm sorry, Ankara this week between the Iranian Armed Forces uh, Chief of Staff and Turkish leaders. President uh, Erdogan uh, spokesman said on Thursday. So this is just one more cog that uh, is being placed in the wheel and aligns Bible prophecy with current events. Now this is something the Bible predicted over 2,000 years ago in Ezekiel chapter 38. If you look at the lineup of nations that would one day when Israel is brought back from the dead and reestablished within their own country, and that happened back in 1948, the Bible says in that chapter uh, book, that Russia would come down upon Israel with a list of nations, most of them Islamic and Arab, but in the list, Iran, Turkey, and a host of other uh, Islamic uh, northern African nations would establish themselves on the northern border of Israel, which, if you don't know it by now, uh, Russia, in the name of defeating ISIS, has worked out a deal with the U.S., to put troops on Israel's northern border that is less than 10 kilometers, in most cases, from Israel's border. Now, certainly, Iran and Russia have long been allies, and uh, right now they are in the final stages of, an, of, an, of a new oil for, for goods deal. But Iran uh, and uh, it, Russia have been working together for many years. And, you know, the Syrian war has taken on many faces, but one of the faces that it's taken on is that Hezbollah has been a big foot soldier for Syria. And many in the intelligence world, and especially in Israel, believe that once this fight against ISIS is done, and of course the rebel resistance to Syria has been put down, that uh, Hezbollah will take their place. And you know, I pretty well believe that's the way it's going to be with all of these different factions that have gathered together in Syria. Once the dust settles, there's going to be a number of militant groups who will be in uh, Syria without a cause. And I don't think there's any question in my mind, and certainly not in uh, the Israeli intelligence community, that these terrorist groups will then turn their attention away from uh, defeating the Syrian rebel groups and ISIS to uh, training their support to Russia, Iran, Iraq, and Hezbollah in what I believe will be an ultimate showdown against Israel. Now the Bible says that once that war takes place, or in the beginning stages of that war, the reason why Russia will come down is because there's going to be a spoil that is so irresistible that the Bible describes it as if they had hooks on their my mouths and they are unable to look away. So this will be a powerful, powerful spoil that uh, we, don't, we simply don't know what it is right now, but a lot of people believe it could be Oil, and, or, oil or gas. And there are others that believe that water will be the culprit. Now personally, I've always believed that the spoil that would uh, bring Russia down upon Israel would be oil, and that they are about to discover a very large gas slash oil deposit within either in the, uh, the Golan Heights or uh, in possibly the Mediterranean Sea. But for some reason, it, Russia will become will decide to come down upon Israel, and there will be a number of willing Islamic states such as Iran, Hezbollah, Iraq, and probably militant groups coming out of Syria. And yes, let's not forget about Turkey. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Turkey is now willing to get in bed with Iran and cooperate militarily. So certainly these are all uh, partnerships that uh, the Bible clearly spelled out in Ezekiel 38 and also in 39 as to what would happen uh, when uh, Israel is established a as a nation again. And you know, if this doesn't worry Israel, uh, there is other things that should. In fact, there's a, new there's a news article from Ynet that says that Netanyahu Putin to meet over Iranian involvement in Syria. You know, with this war possibly winding down, there is a fear that uh, Iranian troops may remain. And that's something that uh, Israeli Prime Minister ben Benjamin Netanyahu wants to speak to uh, uh, President, uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin about how long and what place Iran will play 
once this war is finished. And here's what the article says. says Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is scheduled to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin on Wednesday in the uh, Russian resort town of Sochi to discuss the ceasefire agreement in Syria, which Israel poses as it would uh, serve to cement the presence of Iran and its Shiite proxies in the country. So Israel's quite worried that uh, a ceasefire will ultimately uh, cement the presence of Iran in a more permanent uh, state. But going on with the article, it says this would be the sixth meeting between the two leaders over the past two years over Russia's involvement in the civil war in Syria. The Prime Minister's office said Putin and Netanyahu will discuss the latest developments in the region. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov uh, has recently said Moscow would do whatever it could to take Israel's security interests in Syria into consideration. In recent weeks, Israel has been holding talks uh, with Russia and the United States in an effort to amend the upcoming agreement in a way that would minimize Iranian presence in Syria. Further, the Israeli delegation conveyed Israel's concern that Iran plans to establish land, air, and naval bases in Syria, warning this was a red line for Israel. Now, in Scripture, there's no real indication that uh, during this battle, and speaking of the Battle of Gog and Magog in Ezekiel 38, that Israel would indeed uh, battle with Iran and defeat Iran. So whether or not there are shots fired between Iran and Israel is quite unknown, but we know that at some point in time that Russia will lead a powerful force down upon Israel uh, from their northern border, and they're all in place at this time. So some of the things that you should be paying attention to that are biblical, number one, the Bible says that Israel would become a nation and the land of that generation would not pass away until he would come. Now here are some other things that are also converging and that is Israel we regain Jerusalem. The Bible uh, in Amos does declare that would be the case. And on top of that, in Zechariah 12, 3, it says that during the last days that Israel or Jerusalem would become a cup of trembling to the nations, meaning that everyone will be worried about Jerusalem and the fate of Jerusalem. And that's something that you find right now. In fact, it's an international city. And it's mentioned that uh, at, at some point in time that Russia would come down upon Israel, and that's during the last days, and they would bring Turkey, Iran, uh, and I'm assuming Hezbollah and Syria and uh, Iraq, and as I mentioned earlier, a few of the northern border African nations will also come with them. But this will be a pretty good sized host, according to the Bible. And let's not forget some of the fringe prophecies. The Bible says that coming out of the east, there would be a nation who would field an army of 200 million. Of course, we know only in this generation, this last generation, could there be a nation that could field a standing army of 200 million. And they're both in the far east, which is um, India and China. And last but not least, you should realize that the Bible says that just before the tribulation period begins, there would be an ongoing peace accord, or at least an attempt, with Israel, the Antichrist, and many. And that seems to be what's going on right now, where the modern Islamic nations are saying to Israel that if they will come to the peace table and declare peace, and give the Palestinians their own land, that as a whole, that they would normalize relations with Israel. So these, this is just a few of the converging prophecies that are taking place, or have taken place, since the rebirth of Israel back in 1948. So I'd keep an eye on these events as they play out right before us. And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. The Bible says that it's the point of a man wants to die, then the judgment. You're going to face God one day. And when you do, where will you spend eternity? And you know, that's why Jesus died for the sins of the world, so that when we do face God, we can be accounted worthy. And that's only through our allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you don't know the Lord today, I would recommend that you come to Him and ask Him to save you as soon as possible. And you Christians, you need to get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. Get multiple copies. Give it to your lost friends and loved ones. If you really believe that the Lord is coming back soon, then you need to get this book in their hands. Of course, I have two different versions. One is a paperback version that you can literally hand to your lost friend or loved one. So they'll have this book on hand 
once the rapture takes place and the start of the tribulation period. There's also a digital version that you can email your friend or loved one and ask them to download it. It's written in nine different languages. So it is available for free to somewhere between four and five billion people worldwide. So get a copy of this or uh, email a digital copy to your friend before it is too late. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.